Okay, looks like all our equipment's operating properly, so I'd like to reconvene our regular Board of County Commission meeting. Mr. Chairman, I think we're still having one issue here. Okay, I guess we'll have another recess. <laughs>
Okay, we'll reconvene our meeting, and we think we have all the electronics taken care of. So we really appreciate your patience. Um, commissioners, on our first agenda item, uh, approval of the minutes. Of, uh, I'll move for approval. Second. Okay, we've got a proper motion by Commissioner Goddard, a proper second by Commissioner Rawls. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Next on the agenda item, number three, recognitions. And as Commissioner Harvey would say um, when he was chairman, this is a fun part of our job. And it's truly an honor to be able to, um, to recognize and honor the Pinal Baptist Academy Lady Warriors softball team for their achievement, their record this year in achieving uh, a playoff spot in the final four for the first time, I believe, in the school history. So let's give them just a record. Uh, Administrator Suggs uh, to introduce uh, the coaches, I believe, and he's going to give some stats of this past season. And I'm going to ask the commissioners if we'll join at the podium. And uh, we've got some pins to present to each player and the coaches. So, Administrator Suggs. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And yes, it is indeed an honor and a privilege to do this here this morning. As I call your name, coaches and school administrator, if you would please come to the podium up front, please. Uh, let's start with head coach Jeff Hutchins. Assistant Coach Grady Wallace. <laughs> Assistant Coach Talisa Fletcher. <laughs> Assistant Coach Lily Beams. <laughs> Athletic Director Mr. Terry Goblin. If he's here. <laughs> and School Administrator Mr. Bill Evans. First of all, I'd like to go ahead and, and say a few things this morning about the accomplishments of these great women softball players that we're recognizing here this morning. Uh, I understand that uh, uh, Coach Jeff, this is a, a three-year uh, term that you've been here. Uh, 60 and 18 overall. What a phenomenal record here for Pinal. It's just outstanding what these young ladies have done under your leadership. Uh, the uh, ladies this year uh, won the, uh, uh, were 21 and 5 overall. What a great record for them. Uh, they were the Florida High School Athletic Association 2-2A district champions, congratulations, as well as the 2-2A regional champions as well, and represented Putnam County in the final four down in Vero Beach this last weekend. So what an outstanding season by the Lady Warriors, and we want to commend and congratulate each and every one of you for your accomplishments here today and for making everyone here in Putnam County very proud of, of your season and your in your athletic abilities, and, and thank you so much for that. Uh, on a personal note, I'd like to uh, congratulate both uh, Quinn Romay, who has two daughters playing on this uh, softball team, as well as uh, Mr. Flato, who, uh, Chief Flato, who also has a daughter on this team, you folks will be recognizing here in a few minutes. But just a little bit of, uh, of what they accomplished while they're down in Vero Beach, uh, although they may have not have brought back the championship, they won all of our hearts. And uh, just a couple uh, quick things to understand. Paige was our pitcher on that fateful day down there in, in Vero Beach, uh, who had the, uh, the, the task of facing an Alabama signee, a recruit that's already signed to play for Alabama. And she also struck that individual out. So Paige, congratulations. <laughs> The young lady who is a recruit for Alabama is also the pitcher for the team that we are facing and was pitching a perfect game for one understand for Mr. Quinn Romay and it was Riley Romay who got the hit to break up the perfect game. So, so commissioners without further ado please Mr. Chairman take it over.
Thank you, Administrator Sugg. Um, we're going to call it up each of the players, and um, each commissioner is going to uh, introduce three. Um, as chairman, I'm taking a point of personal preference to introduce two, um, two young ladies that uh, I have a relationship with their parents. Um, the first one is Kristen Flato. I understand that Kristen is the only senior on the team, so you must have a very young team. Uh, I've known Paul and Kim Flato, Kristen's parents, for 25 years. Uh, my wife taught Paul in high school, and uh, their son, AJ, played baseball with my youngest son, Bobby, from the time they were in T-ball all the way through high school. So it was just amazing. Kristen used to be in the dugout in the uh, concession stand, just a little toddler now. She's a a grown young lady and, and headed off to um, to college. Which college are you going to? I should remember. Gardner Webb. Gardner Webb. Yeah. So, congratulations. The second young lady. Um, if you're from the South End, and you're a Langston, you're gonna play baseball or softball. <laughs> Summer Langston, would you come forward? Um, my, I played baseball with her Uncle Terry, her Uncle Bruce, and her dad, Daryl. Um, her aunts played softball, I'm sure. I believe one of your aunts played at bowls, didn't she? I believe she did. So anyway, so if you're a Langston, you play baseball or softball in South Putnam. So and y'all are lucky to have her because I know Crescent City would love her to have her on their team. So, so anyway, congratulations. I'll turn it over to Commissioner Turner. Thank you, Commissioner Pickens, for letting us get involved in this. Usually they don't, they make us sit up there and he gets all this fun to himself, so he decided to split it up some this morning. That was real good of him. So, uh, Abby Collier. Brooke Williams. Darren Scott. And I'll turn it over to uh, Commissioner Harvey. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. Um, Lauren Botley. Is that right? No? Elisa Wallace. Lexi White. Congratulations. I'll turn it over to Commissioner Rawls. Thank you. This really is a privilege for us uh, to be able to do this. Last uh, meeting we had the uh, 4-H livestock judging team um, and they represented really well in the state and um, you guys just exemplify what's good about Putnam County. So, uh, Delana Lynn. <laughs> Alexis Wallace. And Bailey Romay. I worked with her dad at one time. Congratulations. And now for Mr. Goddard. Well, we'll start right out with Paige Bryan. <laughs> Riley Romay. <laughs> and Sierra Edwards. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, hopefully you'll wear these pins, um, you know, around school and uh, whenever you go out of town to promote Putnam County. 
Now, on behalf of the Putnam County Board of County Commissioners, I'd like to present you with a certificate of achievement presented to the Pinal Lady Warriors softball team in recognition of an outstanding 2019 season and a historic accomplishment of advancing to the final four in the Florida High School State Association Regional Championship. Uh, we present this to, to y'all May 28, 2019. Thank you. I'd just like to thank uh, the community for their support. Uh, it was outstanding. The Sheriff's Department gave us a little escort out of town. The girls really enjoyed that uh, for the first time. But, uh, and our parents too, uh, without them, uh, for allowing your kids to play for us and just the support y'all give us. It couldn't be done with, uh, without the support of the local school, community, and everything else. And we've just had a great time, a great season. And thank you for that. Did any of the players like to say anything? I didn't think so. Anybody else? Would you like to? You're good? Okay, I would like to get a, com a picture uh, with the commissioners, with the team and the coaches, and then we'll get the parents to come up also if we can get a real wide-angle lens. So, yeah. Okay, yeah, we'll get in the back. Parents like to come forward, and we can get a, a picture with the parents. Parents, let me take a picture for you. Yes, we can do it all day. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, not, you got to take it. That's right. I don't got to, but y'all like me more than I have. Stand on the chair. Yeah, chair right here. Come up here. Chairman says, "Grizzly bear to teeth." going to play at Florida. I want to know right now. <laughs> Who's going to be a Lady Gator? Anybody? <laughs> no. 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 There you go. That's right. That's right. Go Gator. <laughs> Yeah, you see that spear from the logo, Larry? Thank you. Larry, did you see the spear from the logo? <laughs> no, they were doing the... No, I'm, talking the I'm talking about the logo. They want to go to Florida and play. After we got a Florida State spear. Oh, they want to go to a good school. <laughs> <laughs> the one that's going to the College World Series, by the way. <laughs> Y'all come back and see us. I'm surprised I didn't catch anything out of Russ on that comment. That <laughs> was good. He can't hear you. He can't hear you. Russ, you must have your hearing aid turned off when I made that bad comment about I, FSU. I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we'll move forward in our agenda. We'll move down to item number four, public comment. This portion of the agenda is designed to allow citizens an opportunity to bring matters to the attention of the board. 
It is not reasonable to expect the board will engage in debate or deliberation about matters on which the board has received no prior information on part of the agenda. Please limit your comments to around three minutes. We prefer that you fill out a public comment card. They're available at the entrance and the exit of our building and then give them to Sarah Oliver over to my left, your right. Um, our first public comment is Ms. Cheryl Robinson. If you'll please state your name and address and speak clearly into the microphone. Thank you. Cheryl Robinson, uh, 131 Rivergate Court, Jacksonville, Florida. I'm sorry, correction, 13133 Rivergate Court, Jacksonville, Florida. In, in my question, what do I do next? <laughs> um, the comment, I guess you are talking about the sale of a property? Yes, sir. Um, I'm in regard to Agenda 5E. I just want to know if after the meeting or at some time this week I can get a copy of the results. I would think that'd be possible, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. We Thank can. you very much. Okay. Can we send it to this particular address that you have on the card? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Any other public comment? Okay. Mr. Earl? Earl Ballinger, 496 Clifton Road, Crescent City. A couple of weeks ago, we had the Clean Up Putnam campaign, and we went out and we did our thing. I was cleaning up as part of the Putnam Republican Club down on Union Avenue, across the street from the bus garage. There's a driveway there, and there's an antenna farm there. I stood in one spot for 15 minutes picking up cigarette butts. And I, talk to other people in other areas, cigarette butts are all over the place. I would like you guys to think about an ordinance. Any company that has a smoke-free zone, put up a small smoking area over in one corner, put a little canopy over it, and put a container in there to collect the butts to keep them off of the streets, keep them off of the roads, help, help Putnam County. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Earl. Okay. Any other public comment? Okay, seeing none, we'll close the public comment portion of the meeting. And before we move to the consent agenda, I'd like to ask Ms. Kristen Mitchell uh, to come forward. Um, she's the director of Keep Putnam Beautiful, and she was the organizer of the Trash pickup, countywide cleanup. <laughs> uh, she's going to give us an uh, update. Thank you, Commissioner Pickens. Um, thank you all. First, I'd like to say uh, Keep Putnam Beautiful appreciates Putnam County so much. We had incredible support from most of our commissioners. Some of you had other obligations. Um, thank you so much for coming out and cleaning and rallying the troops. This year, we had approximately 347 people show up and clean. And in total, um, we had a couple groups that had to clean outside of the exact day, but in total, we gathered 11,860 wow. pounds of trash. Wow. So I feel like it was very successful. We had, it was a good year. Um, I hope that I enjoyed the more people coming out and working. I, I'm glad that we picked up so much trash. My hope is that every year we still get that number of people, but our numbers and weight go down. So thank you all very much. Okay. Thank you, Kirsten. Mr. Chairman. May I make a comment? Yeah, Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This was the first year that I've seen three of the council members from the town of Inalarkin actually show up and uh, register and show up and help clean. So um, as we get, you know, the goal is to never pick up another piece of trash ever and, and work ourselves out of a job. That's not realistic. But, um, you know, we love to see those numbers. The volunteers go up and the trash go down. And, um, and it shows when Putnam County is clean, it, it makes our visitors look really good. So it's great to have Kristen on board and uh, the, the enthusiasm she shows is catching and everyone wants to be involved. Even if you don't, she will strong arm you until you are involved. But, uh, <laughs> but, but no, I tell you, it's a great thing to clean up our county and, and to do that. Only took a few hours. We had a great time out in the West End and I'm sure everybody else had great times in their areas too. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Harmon. And thank you, Christian. Uh, I participated this year and actually chaired it uh, in South Putnam. We had over 25 uh, people involved. And I want to thank Earl and the Republican Club. I think y'all brought eight people to clean that area that y'all had out there. And it's amazing what gets thrown on the side of the uh, road. Uh, it was two tires, uh, a bed frame, and an LP gas tank, a uh, 35-pound tank and just on the side of the road. So anyway, that all got picked up. So, Okay, uh, Commissioner, we'll move down to the consent agenda. The items wishing to be, uh, Commissioners wish to pull. And I'll start with Commissioner Goddard. Commissioner Rawls? Um, item B. B or and, D? And uh, B is in Bravo and okay. E as an echo. <clears throat> okay. Um, Commissioner Harvey? Uh, I don't have any, sir. Commissioner Turner? I have none, sir. Okay. And I have none. Okay. Can we get a motion to approve uh, the rest of the consent agenda? I'll move for approval of consent agenda A, C, D. And F. And F. Well, F is the administration agreement. Keep putting them beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Include that. F. Okay. Second. Okay. All right. Got a proper motion by Commissioner uh, Goddard and a proper second by Commissioner Rawls. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in, ca all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. We'll move to consent agenda item B and Commissioner Rawls. Um, it, I'd like to see if we could get this moved to the workshop this afternoon for a final um, action. Uh, I had a brief discussion with Mr. Tilton this morning and with Mr. Willen last week uh, regarding this um, truck and chassis. I think um, we owe it to the um, sanitation department to discuss not just this truck, but they have apparently three trucks that um, we're going to be discussing uh, between now and whenever we replace them and uh, look at the possibilities of possibly rechassing maybe, um, but not just running out and buying a brand new truck right now. Um, we have uh, three trucks. If there's a, a way that we can use the existing um, bodies and re rechassis them, save a little bit of money, um, and also maybe discuss the possibility of uh, some savings and not using the state contract or using it. I just, um, in my research, I've um, found some other options that would give us the same vehicle at a lower cost. So I would, I would, uh, I'd like to make a motion that we move this to a workshop for this afternoon, if possible, and dispense with it then. Okay, we've got a motion on the floor to move agenda item B to the workshop or to the transportation meeting this afternoon. Do we have a second? Mr. Chairman, I'll second for discussion. Okay, we've got a proper <clears throat> a motion and a proper second on the floor. Any, any discussion here? I do have one, Mr. Okay. Chairman. All right, Commissioner Harvey. The conversation is, um, uh, Commissioner Rawls, thank you for bringing this to the attention. And it appears that Mr. Tilton is in agreement is what you were saying. Does this afternoon give us enough time to put all this back together and make this decision? I think so. I think so, yeah. Ba basically, the, we, we own three, three trucks right now. Um, there's an issue, two of them, and Mr. Tilton, correct me if I'm wrong, but we, two of the trucks are, are the max, that are, are the um, uh, Caterpillars that we're having issues with, Yeah, correct? Mr. Tilton, will you come up to the podium, please? <clears throat> And one of them is a, uh, a Sterling. I guess we're replacing the Sterling. It's 10 years old and pretty much timed out. Um, so, you know, one of the questions that went through my mind was, what are the possibilities of, of rechassing and taking the, the roll-off container frame off and putting it on a new chassis that saves, according to this, about $35,000. Um, but what this doesn't discuss is how we're dispensing with the old trucks as well, because going online, I'm looking at trucks that are 10, 12, 15 years old that are selling in excess of $100,000. Um, so, you know, are we just gonna surplus these trucks and get rid of them? Um, you know, what are our options? I, I would just like to have a, you know, a meaningful conversation about what we're doing. Since this isn't a one-time one, one -time deal, it's gonna be three in the very near future. But Mr. Chairman, why still have the floor? Is today the proper venue for that? I, Mr. I, I Mr. Tilton, I haven't heard from you, so. Uh. Uh, commissioners, I'm I'm new to this, so bear with me just a second. Okay. We've got here. We've got since I've been since I've been at the sanitation department for the last uh, five six weeks. Um, four of those weeks we were dealing with truck issues. Um, so it was in our budget to purchase a new truck this year, and that's the reason we brought this to the floor. We have two cats. Um, my understanding is they've had issues. They're the ones that are uh, about three or four years old. They're the ones uh, we're, that we're running at this time. Our Sterlings were purchased, Commissioner Rawls, in 07. So they're 12 years old. 
Um, we, we're supposed to have three running trucks. Right now we have two, um, the, and none of them have ran. Uh, we haven't had one week where we've had all of them the ability to run them. So that was the purpose in putting this on. Um, I have not done the research that Commissioner Rawls had done. Um, like I said, that was in our budget, and uh, we have a need, um, and that was the reason we proposed this at this time. Mr. Tilton, I'm sure that you're going to be, I know you're new on the job, and I know that there's <coughs> a lot of needs out there, and I think you and I have had a brief conversation about that. Um, will you be bringing together a, a better plan pretty soon of what you really need out there, land, not just need, but what, what we can do to make our landfill profitable? Sure. We're working, we're working on some things uh, like that. There's a lot of housekeeping that needs to be done out of the landfill with, uh, in a lot of matters. Um, uh, this being one of them to make sure that we can continue to service our outlying areas. Um, and we'll be putting those things together and bringing them forward as well as trying to grow our customer base there at the landfill itself. Could you possibly be ready for a conversation at two o'clock today or is this the conversation we need to have today now? Is no, I, I mean, I, I can... Yes. Mr. Chairman, okay. point of order, please. That's just too quick, Commissioner. He's that's got a deal going right now that I've been working some with him on, being as that's my part of the thing. Doesn't need to be reported just yet. Okay. So within two weeks, everything should be together. We can have it at the next workshop. He can even you can even call a special meeting in a week or so. Well, I was more That'd referring to this item. This item. The truck. Right. Well, I'm. I'm not there yet on just okay. this truck. I thought you were asking oh, for I'm, a no, total no, 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 plan no, no, this afternoon. No, no okay. way. Um, so, excuse me, go ahead, Mr. Harvey. Well, I, I think I really, I mean, I second it for discussion so we could, sure. I could hear from you. So, I mean, you're saying you had two trucks that had been down. You really need to have three going. This would be the third truck if we got it. Yes, sir. We can be prepared for a conversation to have at 2 o'clock. So we'll, uh, we'll visit about it, and we'll bring out, and we'll see what discussion brings. Okay, that's, if that's the direction we want to go in. Okay. The, here, the thing is, gentlemen, um, is uh, we, have, we have not had a truck yet that we have not had an issue with in the last five weeks since I've been there. Mr. Okay. Chairman, I yield the floor. Sir. Okay. Before I go to Commissioner Turner, I'm going to go to legal counsel. Mr. I don't Casper. have an opinion on whether you should defer it or not, but I don't think it's a transportation committee. All right. Item. That's what. Okay. All right. Commit what we have this afternoon. All right. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Turner. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm not willing to move this forward. I mean, this is a simple, simple thing to me. I understand Commissioner Rawls' intent um, effort to save money. Good deal. I think that's a good deal. But this isn't the time to do it. We got two more of these trucks that are fixing to wear out. If you want to, if you want to start looking into refurbishing trucks instead of getting these running, I understand. I, I'm, that's a great thing for you to look into that and possibly save money. But right now, we'll actually be hurting the landfill and their operations if we wait on buying this truck because the roll-off, all the bearings are. Uh, I called and asked the same thing. All the bearings are bad on it. The truck, they can't keep running. That's their oldest, worst truck. They got to have three trucks running or they can't service the outlying areas. So while what you're saying, I have no problem with whatsoever, whatsoever as far as looking into how to save the county, possibly save the county money by refurbishing some of these vehicles. I just don't think that it would help at this time if we tried to refurbish this one. We got two more that are three to four years old. You know, they're still running. That'll give us some time to look into this for the next one that comes along without penalizing the, the operations of the landfill in the short term. So I'm, I'm prepared to move this forward today, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Okay. Commissioner Goddard. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. When you and I were going through everything, this is one of the things you told me that you're in desperate need of out there. And in talking to quite a few of the other people, Bill Rulon being one of them, uh, I, I understand refurbishing, but they tell me the chassis is about beat to death by the time it's, uh, and, when, it's and time, when they're wore out, they are wore out. So we'll have to look, when you go to the roll-offs, the rail, you have, to, you have to look at everything. You have to ultrasound the rails, you have to make sure that all the bushings and the hydraulic cylinders are things, and each individual truck's gonna be different. Each ever, you know, they all wear and tear differently. So um, there'll be a process to put this together. 
um, which will take some time. Uh, there's no doubt about it to be able to try to put this together to see just how much money it does save us. Um, but uh, at the same time, I go back to we haven't had one of the, we haven't had a truck on our fleet that has ran the entire time since I've been here. Yeah, and that was the other question. You you're wanting to go to the Mac? You're uh, I, I don't because it was a better price, or that was the when we when we ran the quote through fleet. That was the quote that we got. Okay. And what's your opinion of the Mac? Uh, I'm very familiar with Macs and Volvos, and, and both of them, as long as I got a Galbraith type hoist on the back of it, they're good trucks. They're run and they're dependable. Okay. And then one more before, because I'd already been through this. Uh, you really don't need to wait. You need this truck. Uh, I, I as believe yes, sir. As possible. Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. I'm, I'm, I yield the floor. Okay, Commissioner Rawls. <clears throat> Just for clarification. Since I've been here in the past six months, it seems like everything is a rush to go in and spend more money than we needed to. Um, Mr. Tilton is brand new. I'm relatively new. Um, but what frustrates me as a taxpayer, I'm not going to sit here as a commissioner now. I'm going to talk to this commission as a taxpayer. You're going to waste my money because poor planning constitutes an emergency all of a sudden. To Mr. Uh, Goddard's point, a Volvo costs $94,000. The MAC <clears throat> is... Uh, $96,000. If you look at a, a, a freight liner, $57,000. So my point is, we've had no conversation. What I keep hearing is from this commission is, look, we've not done it right in the past. <clears throat> we need to make changes in the future. This is the future. We're talking about not one, but three trucks. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mr. Rulon told me that we're replacing a, uh, a Caterpillar. So whether it's a cat or a 12-year-old Sterling, he told me the truck was three years old. That set off bells and whistles in my head because why are we getting rid of a three-year-old vehicle? I've yet to hear if there's a trade-in value to the old truck and chassis. I can understand if a truck and chassis is worn out. I also understand that you can refurbish a chassis, you can refurbish a, a body. What I'm talking about is maybe rechassing the body. You're saying the rails have to be um, uh, Ultrasound. Did you say, ultrasound? Okay, Make ultrasound. Sure they're not um, too thin. I, I, I got it. I got it. So um, my, my point is, here we are once again, one of the poorest counties in Florida, rushing to the altar to waste money instead of doing our due diligence and potentially saving fifteen, thirty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. So um, I, I did a quick search online this weekend and found a truck, a Mac, with a brand new um, lift on it. I don't know that it was a, a Galbraith or not, but it, was, it, it, it had the, the hook. Um, and it was $150,000. What it cost to ship from California, I don't have a clue, um, and it may not be worth doing, but my question uh, to Mr. Tilton this morning was, has anybody talked to Rush Truck Center up in Jacksonville to see if, if maybe they have a chassis that's a little bit older, but that's in really good condition? Um, if, 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 if we're having issues with these, with these uh, Caterpillar trucks and their, their, their low mileage, um, young age vehicles, it sounds to me like we had an issue at procurement where somebody didn't step up at the time to hold the manufacturer responsible to us for warranty items. If that ship is sailed, I get it. But I don't want to step right back into it now and on a consent agenda item throw $165,000 out the window only to have us come back later and say, well, you know what, the, 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 the Mack trucks that we're buying were having issues or uh, we're, we're having issues with, with the, uh, the bodies on them. So, um, it, this, isn't, this isn't your responsibility, obviously, but uh, this comes down to management and leadership. And I, I think at this point, it's time for us to lead and manage. Um, this county is flying blind right now, in my estimation. You've got a bunch of new people here. Nobody seems to know what's going on, and this is a perfect example of it. And I'll shut up now. I Just appreciate I, that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Turner? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Um, I'm in agreement that the county can use some uh, changes for sure. <clears throat> I'm not in agreement that the county go to buying old used equipment. Sorry, I can't get there. We buy equipment, buy the best we can buy, and then we hold it and use it until it's war slap out. So I don't agree with buying used equipment. I don't know that I'll agree with rebuilding the old wore out stuff we have unless somebody can show me in writing where it saves the county money in the end. Not up front when you write the check, but in the end. Then I might come on board. Um, the, uh, like I said earlier, I'm willing to move this forward today. Um, I, take, I take exception that we're even 
in here today trying to, to, to uh, break down an employee that's been here five weeks. Best one we could find after a countrywide search. And in my opinion, he's done a hell of a job since he's been here. And all he did was put on the agenda that he wanted a truck that was already in the budget that he didn't put in the budget. And we're going to chastise him for that. I'm sorry, I can't get there. So I'm not willing to move this on, Mr. Chairman, and I'm not going to vote for it. I think that we need to give him his truck, let him do his landfill operations, and give him a chance to be successful at what he's trying to do. All right, Commissioner Turner, uh, Commissioner Goddard. Yeah, I just wanted to throw in here, I, I understand you're, you are new. This has been discussed. The, we've already discussed uh, the equipment needs out there at the landfill, uh, good gosh, a year ago. Uh, so th this isn't new, and this was already in the budget because it was a necessary item. We knew our equipment out there was failing. The, the, so again, this is not this is not new. I know it seems like it's new, but it's not new. We we've already been through this, and I've been out there with them, and he's doing a tremendous job. By the way, anybody who hasn't had the opportunity to go out there, big change. You you've done a fantastic job out there in the short time you've been there. Um, but he is not asking for anything that's out of line. This is a piece of equipment that was already in our budget, already ready to be on there, and he's in desperate need of it. Okay, Commissioner Rawls. <clears throat> Commissioner Turner, I, I appreciate your passion. Um, I, I don't know where you're getting down that I'm breaking you down, Mr. Tilton. I'm not breaking you down. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that you're in the position that you find yourself in. Like I said, you're, you're the new guy. Um, the question to Mr. Rulon was, what are we replacing? The question to you is, what are we replacing? I got, I got two different answers. Yes, sir. Um, whether this is budget or not, I still think we owe it to the public to spend every penny that we can right now as gingerly as possible and make it go as far as possible. Um, the little bit of money that we have right now, once we spend it, is gone. There is no promise for tomorrow. I'm not sure what Mr. Turner has working in the background, so I can't speak to whether or not that landfill is going to be squirting millions of dollars a month out or losing millions of dollars a month in the future. Um, for the record, I'm not here chastising you. Where that comes from, I have no clue. So let me make it perfectly clear. I'm not chastising you. It would be very clear if I was. Um, if somebody on this commission takes it personally, I'm sorry. I can't speak to that. But in my estimation, I think we need to slow this down a little bit, get the commission involved in the procurement policy. If this was discussed a year ago, things have changed in the past year. Um, Obviously, you're not involved in the, the, the procurement. You said we made a request. This is what Fleet sent over. So if, if Fleet is the one that's driving the conversation, I think Fleet should be at the table and talking about this with the commission and how we're looking. Somebody at Fleet made a decision, obviously, a couple of years ago, three years ago, on trucks that we're now hating, that are three years old. And whether we drive them in the ground or we drive them um, for three years doesn't matter. If they're not working in three years, somebody made a bad decision. I think it, it falls um, on this commission to make sure that we don't repeat that. That's all I'm saying. Administrator Sines. <clears throat> yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, thank you. A uh, couple of things here this morning. Uh, I appreciate everyone's comments. Uh, first of all, this is the way the budget process works, Jake, uh, and I think you recognize that. Uh, when we sit in these meetings like we did last year to put the budget together, we talk about the needs of the county and we look at the needs of each department, you know, separately. Uh, there's been equipment that's been purchased for the landfill this year, I believe to a tune of about 1.5 million with a new Caterpillar and a new Dozier and all that, to get ready for what we hope to be an opportunity to increase the tonnage of our landfills, which will hopefully, by the way, lower the assessments for all our taxpayers in the county that we're so concerned about. I think that is paramount to understand that first and foremost. So uh, this has been discussed uh, quite uh, extensively in the, in the past with our budget and the equipment needs. And it's not an emergency at this point. This has been a discussion for a while because uh, before all of us got here, the landfill was, uh, was an entity of its own and was not given the proper uh, respect and, and things weren't done for the landfill that should have been done in the last several years. So it's not an emergency that that's anyone on this dais has created. And secondly, you know, I'm not going to jump on the bandwagon here this morning, but I am, as the county administrator, a little bit concerned when I have a sitting commissioner talk about the county running blind. 
you know, and, that, and, that, and that's a direct admission to the, uh, to the county administration, and I take exception to that. We work very diligently with all of our departments, all of our commissions that put a budget together that is exactly based on need, not want. And this is a need for the landfill. We have two trucks out there that aren't functioning properly. We need a third vehicle in order for Mr. Tilton to do his job. It was no different than we bought the equipment. It was equipment that had been worn out over the years. It was time. So uh, I agree with the commission. Uh, we'll do whatever the direction of the commission is because that's our job, that's our role, is to support the commission and then, and then put into place whatever policies you, you, you five want to put in. But this is, this is one of those policies and decisions that was made last year. Thank you, Mr. Ersoggs. Yeah, I have to make a comment on the county being led blind. I, that's that's a hard one. We when we all got elected up here a few years ago or appointed, there were issues that we had to address, and I believe, uh, you know, from a, a number of issues, and some of it was staffing, and I think we put the proper people in place um, in our staff, and. Um, I, I think we're making great strides. Um, is there any other comments on this before we, yep. Commissioner mm -hmm. Rawls? I apologize if I offend anybody by making the comment that we're flying blind, but if, if you could hear the conversations from my side of the telephone, when I ask one person one thing and someone else something else and a third person, I get three different answers. Um, so almost seven months ago, I requested a list of contracts with start dates and end dates. I've got another contract in front of me, a, a citizens call me up, concerned about, um, that's 10 years old. And nobody seems to know where all the contracts are. I, in seven months, we can't just get a list of our active contracts with start and end dates. So from, from my perspective, we are flying kind of blind. Not everybody seems to have a, a cohesive, we, we don't have a, a plan of action where all the departments are working um, together and working uh, under the same direction. I realize we just got a new general services manager. I realize that, that she's going to be doing our contracting, but it doesn't make it any less painful <coughs> knowing that until we get to that point, we're just going to continue to potentially spend money that we shouldn't be having to spend. All I'm asking for is to have a conversation start with this commission that involves looking at every penny that we spend now and, and getting the maximum impact out of it. You know, our roads, roads, roads. You know, you guys told me when I first got seated, I'm gonna hear a lot about roads. I'm hearing a lot about roads. I'm hearing every single week it seems like somebody else has an issue and we don't seem to have any extra money for it. Um, no pay raises for our employees in 11 years. There's, you know, every time that we spend this money, we need to be thinking about the people that we're potentially impacting. So whether this was discussed a year ago in last year's budget or today doesn't matter, we could save the money if there's, if there's a way to save it. That's all I'm saying. We don't have to spend 165,000. We're not discussing one truck, we're discussing three trucks. One of them is 12 years old, two of them are three years old. I think we should really take that into consideration. I will withdraw my motion if Mr. Harvey will do it, withdraw his second and we can move this thing forward and maybe in the future we'll discuss how we procure trucks in the future so we don't have this conversation three years down the road with the next truck. Mr. Okay. Chairman, I withdraw my second. Okay, so Commissioner Rawls uh, withdrew his motion. Commissioner <coughs> Harvey withdrew the second. Mr. So. Chairman, I move that we move this item forward. Okay, we've got a proper motion by Commissioner second. Turner I'll to second. move item B. Uh, forward, and we got a second by Commissioner uh, Goddard. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Silton. Um, item E. Item E, Commissioner Rawls. The reason I pulled this up, I got uh, phone calls from a few people wanting to know why these were not online. They want to know how they came about bidding on this. To be perfectly honest with you, I wasn't sure of the process myself. I'm still not sure how it was, how it was done, but um, I did receive phone calls from people. Uh, one was, was a, a, real, a real estate broker wanting to know um, how this was published. Um, so I just, you know, in the, in the future, maybe we should have something on our website uh, that includes these or a link to it or whatever. Um, okay. Julianne, you want to address that? Mm -hmm. To directly answer your question, not only were they on our website, but we also took out the required legal public notice in the paper. We also took out a 
large half page ad mm -hmm. in the paper, which is not anywhere required and we don't do that for any other bid. So they were online, they were at the front desk of the office, they were published in the public notice section, and they were also published in a half page ad showing each of the properties. And we put a sign on the property, correct? And, and I'm sorry, we had my department go out and put signs <coughs> on every one of the properties as well. You're correct. Thank you, Commissioner Turner. Oh, like I said, I, I didn't go looking for it online. I don't know. Um, it's still there, obviously, just as all of our bids are. They're all online. So was this maybe was this put on with with the regular bids? Correct. It okay. Is a bid. Okay. I think I think they were looking for it to be on like the home page or something. There would be a something on there that would blast it out. But I. I got it. Okay. Any other questions? Mr. Turner? Uh, yes, I noticed in that, seeing how we brought it out, I was going to ask later, but seeing how uh, Commissioner Rawls uh, flagged it and brought it out, there was one of those properties that didn't get a bid on it. Correct. Uh, are we going to try that one again? Are we going to go like send a letter to the neighbors that say, if you're interested in this property, would you please take a look at it or something? Or yes, is it so just going to go back on our list that we're going to perpetually own that we don't need? No, sir. So, yes, also we did for these properties, we sent out lists to adjacent owners within so many feet. Um, Tabitha took care of that. So two things. Um, what will happen today is the, the properties that are officially awarded by you, they have up till July 1st to pay in full. At that time, we're gonna know all properties that either cleared our name or didn't. Even if somebody bid on them and they never bring us payment in full. At that time, we're gonna know what needs to go back out for a second round. And I believe you also have some other properties that are already identified waiting to go. Um, and so we'll do these until we are done or you know, they're, they're all off our roll at this point. And I will say that we did have that one property that nobody um, participated in. After the bids closed, I had three calls that said, I got the letter and I meant to come participate. This is the property I wanted, but I just never made time to do it. And so some of it is just a matter of, we gave them a pretty long period of time, like more than a month or 28 official days. Um, and, and a couple of them said, well, I wanna be specifically contacted if you do it again. So we have a list rolling of people who wanna be contacted if we do something anywhere in the county. And so we've done all of that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, right. Commissioner Harvey. Uh, Julie, thank you for that explanation. I really appreciate that. Um, these were the ones that were sheeted to the county, um, but it's been a, a conversation very heatedly and I think very positively about the ones that um, we foreclosed on basically because of codes violations. Where are we at with those? Um, are, are we... <clears throat> Pointing the finger over here to legal counsel. Legal always counsel. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I always defer to legal. Well, th those were the ones that we really also were talking. I mean, it's a big, it's a big pie to cook, if you will. But I'm, I'm glad we're starting, and I'm glad things are coming. So. Miss Lassiter tells me that every property or plus property y'all are talking about, none of them were gained through foreclosures. Okay, they're all it's cheated tax deeds. Okay. Now, I'm not sure that's true, but I'm pretty sure it's true. Okay. So my understanding is there's a there's a list of somewhere well, in the range 20 of something, I think. Yeah. somewhere in the range yeah, of thirty. Yeah, there was supposed to be a list of twenty eight that somebody showed us a few months ago, one time sometime last year. Right. I think Brian Hammond may have showed it to us before he left. So there was a list of twenty eight properties that had buildings on it that needed to be abated. That's now, where we got them from. I have no idea, but there was, I saw a list of 28 properties that needed abating. Right. If we could find that list somewhere. We, we have it. We yeah, got Ms. it. Ms. Tabitha yeah. has it. Okay. The, then, the then issue we, is there's confusion between how we acquired title. There, some people keep saying we foreclosed on them. And Tabitha well, says, I'm almost sure, Counselor, that that's what Brian said, right or wrong or indifferent. It doesn't really well, matter well, to me. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't really matter to me either at this point. All I'd like to see is them rascals move forward and somebody clean them up and get them back on the tax rolls. That's all that matters to me. Yes, so it was. We, we do have the list of 28 to 30. Like I said, that was a round number. Um, and it was decided to do these six first, which I understand was talked about with you at a commission workshop prior to. So we put these six out first, and we do have the list, and we're going to work through it all the way to the end. Mr. Chairman, while I step the floor, I want to say congratulations. This money is going to go back to our general fund, 
It was properties that were sitting out there that we had no use for, that we didn't really want, and now we're looking at 40, almost 46,000 going back in general fund. So we're, we'll, we're gonna gain experience as we keep going down the, this road. So I look forward to the next round of them coming up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I yield okay. the floor. Okay, Mr. Uh, one Turn last up. thing, Mr. Chairman, I'd, uh, I'd just like to uh, point a finger at Commissioner Goddard and say job well done because <laughs> This thing had just about <laughs> fell between the cracks when he got it back on tra track again, and uh, right. I think uh, it should be, uh, he should get the glory for That's it. That's right. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Aren't you glad I pulled that from the consent agenda? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Julianne. Mr. Chairman, I move that we move this item forward. Second. I second. Okay, we've got a proper motion to move agenda item F forward by Commissioner Turner and second by Commissioner Rawls. E, sir. Excuse me, E. e I don't know why I want to do that. <clears throat> e. Uh, any discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor indicate for saying aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Item E moves forward. Okay, our next agenda item is um, public hearings. Um, proposed ordinance amending ordinance amending ordinance 2018-24 establishing requirements related to commercial and non-residential solid waste collection permits so i'll turn that over to um legal counsel and uh, administrator suggs <laughs> okay yes sir uh we're uh we're here today because of the exhibit with the application apologize my glasses are transitional i can't see with them right now and so what we're doing is we're just cleaning up language between the ordinance and the application to make sure that the Exhibit A application matches the language in the ordinance. I do believe uh, Commissioner Harvey brought up a, a, a good question, good concern this morning about uh, whether or not the insurance should list Putnam County as additional insured. And so we spoke very briefly this morning with our with our legal team, and I think that's probably an appropriate request. Yes, and the, our, the suggestion is on page 69, uh, of the agenda packet section two paragraph three it talks about general liability and then it says with Putnam County being named as an additional insured and then it talks about business automobile liability and it doesn't have the language about Putnam County being named as an additional sure insured and we would recommend to add that language uh, with Putnam County being named as an additional insured under the business automobile liability policy on page 69 and similarly on page 72 which is part of the application uh, subsection 4 Roman numeral 4 paragraph 3 talks about this it basically repeats what we just said in the ordinance it says general liability with Putnam County being named as additional insured. Then it talks about business automobile liability, and we would insert the language with Putnam County being named as an additional insured uh, in the business automobile liability section there. So with those changes, make sure those are the only ones. With the ordinance before you, with those changes, it would be what? We would the staff would recommend that you adopt after the public hearing. Okay. Mr. Harvey, any <coughs> No, I I just used my twenty eight years of experience to work today <laughs> and you know, but you know, it takes a team effort and let me just say, I mean this we just you know, we're work we work as a team and we try to bring these things up. So thank you. Okay, this is motion right. Yeah, uh, I'll open the public comment portion of our public hearing. Any individuals wishing to speak for or against uh, item A? Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public comment portion. And what's the pleasure of this commission? Mr. Mr. Chairman, Chairman, I think the motion be, would be to uh, adopt the ordinance uh, as amended with the language supplied by legal counsel. That was exactly what I was going to say. Amazing. <laughs> so, could have been so, so, so move, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> we have a proper motion by Commissioner second. Turner and second by Commissioner Harvey. Uh, any discussion? Me. Okay, seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, item A passes. Um, item B under public hearings, uh, zoning map amendment from R2 to C2, uh, case R19001. And I'll turn it over to Mr. Mike Brown. Mr. Chairman and Commission, 
Mike Brown, Planning and Development Services. Um, R19-01 <coughs> is a public hearing for a rezoning of a parcel uh, from Residential 2 to C2. The applicant is uh, Mr. Alvin Price and William Isaac, and the property is located at 345 South Highway 17 in East Palatka. Just a little background, this parcel is actually has split zoning between two zoning districts. Uh, the front 175 feet is designated commercial two, and the, the remaining rear part of the parcel is residential to R2. Parcel has approximately 340 feet of frontage on US 17. There are no wetlands and no special flood hazard areas um, on the parcel and does have direct access to US 17 via permitted um, driveways. Um, there's a aerial sh um, indicating the location of the parcel. Um, the future land use is urban reserve. Um, and as I indicated, the current zoning is basically the front half, or at least the front, the half fronting US Highway 17 um, is C2 uh, with the remainder R2. Um, and the desire is to rezone the entire parcel to C2 uh, for util utilization for commercial purposes as allowed under the C2 zoning district. Um, in looking at the comprehensive plan consistency, the urban service area on the future land use uh, map are areas uh, where urban type infrastructure uh, is provided or will be provided. Um, and urban type infrastructure includes central water and sewer as well as major roads. Um, this is an area, just to point out, that um, has uh, county water and sewer lines uh, running down to it so that uh, any development on the site will tie into the county sewer and water system. Uh, neighborhood commercial and community commercial uses uh, such as the uses allowed under C2 are allowed in the urban service uh, future land use category. Um, the existing zoning, um, the C2 um, is consistent with what the intended uses would be in the future. Um, and the reason for the changing from the R2 is the our residential two zoning district does not allow commercial uses um, and the intent is to use the entire purpose, the entire parcel for commercial uses. Um, in analyzing the, the change, staff looks at um, a number of things. And again, the future, uh, future land use of urban service is consistent and does allow a, the C2 zoning district and the uses allowed under C2. The parcel does have direct access onto US Highway 17. Um, US Hi Highway 17 in this area is operating an acceptable level of service. Uh, any, uh, any development as allowed under the comp plan or the um, land development code on this site um, would not result in an exceedance of the level of service on US Highway 17. Um, and as I pointed out earlier, there's no wetlands or special flood hazard areas on the, the site. Um, and surrounding the site, you do have commercial um, across the street and directly adjacent um, to the north uh, of the site. Uh, and as I pointed out, the county has invested in water and sewer service to support development in this area. Uh, staff finds that the proposed rezoning to C2 is consistent with the comp plan, is consistent with the locational requirements found in the land development code for the commercial two zoning district and is compatible with the surrounding uses. The planning commission at its April 10th, uh, 2019 hearing um, unanimously recommended approval of the proposed rezoning Staff recommends approval of the request to amend the zoning map from R2 to commercial two for the subject parcel. Is there any questions of staff? Okay. 
Commissioners, any questions of staff? Yeah, I have one. Okay, Commissioner Turner. Uh, I guess with them only changing the back half of this parcel from yes. what they didn't have to have signs out on the highway. We, they put no. the signs back on the on the road behind it that it yeah. fronted. I, there are were both signs on both there because I put okay. them up, so okay. I know there were some on the front. I guess I just didn't notice one on the front edge up there by the highway, and I was wondering if maybe that's what it was. Did you actually put it on the? front edge of the whole parcel out by the highway or back at the, excuse yes. me, back put, on the front edge yeah, of the fact, back I had, parcel? I had two of them up, I put two of them up on the front. Okay, thank you, 17. Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. I'll open the public comment portion of the public hearing. Um, is the applicant here? Would you like to make any comments? Okay. All right. Any persons wishing to speak for or against this? Um, okay. Seeing none, we'll close the public comment portion. Is this a quasi? Yeah, it's a quasi judicial hearing. We need to make ex parte, uh, any ex parte communications need to be disclosed and made part of the record. Okay. All right. Starting with Commissioner Rawls. I have none. Mr. Goddard. Okay. I visited the property, but that makes no, well, I have no bearing on <coughs> my decision. Commissioner Harvey? I've had none. Okay. Commissioner Turner? I've had none. And I've had none. So, okay. Mr. Chairman, um, as this case meets the, uh, the, is consistent with the goals, objectives, and policies of the comprehensive plan, I move that it be um, approved. Second. Okay, we got a motion to approve um, case R1901 by Commissioner Turner and a second by Commissioner Harvey. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing, and seeing none, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, motion zoning passes. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Brown. Uh, we'll move on to agenda item seven, Honorable Tim Smith. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we don't have any clerk or uh, Board of County Commissioner related items, but I would like to take just a second to uh, congratulate the lack of young professionals on the Blue Crab, uh, the Blue Crab Festival uh, this year. Um, I, I was probably pretty close to all of that because uh, my son-in-law and daughter uh, were part of the uh, young professionals and so we had a lot of discussions over the last uh, couple of months about this. Um, so I wanted to recognize uh, David and Laura Parsons, uh, Dr. Seth and Bryn Miles, uh, Jonathan and Julian Griffiths, Matt Buckles, Katie Long and Benji Bates and I know there were others but those are the ones that I'm aware of uh, that worked uh, really hard and I thought it was pretty amazing what happened because it was just a hundred days ago that they agreed to take this project on um, I don't think that anybody expected the crowd to show up that was there mm -hmm. uh, it was tremendous uh, I know they ran out of food early uh, they sold the t-shirts out quickly uh, even the beer got a little low, but that got <laughs> replaced. Uh, and the comments that I've heard personally and have seen on online uh, really were just a real testament uh, that this group of about 20, I think that's about how many are really in the young professionals, but with the support of many in Putnam County to um, share in that success and to also share in the cost of that. I know there were donations uh, made uh, from the Beck group, uh, the, the, the Bates group uh, helped cover the cost of the fireworks and others stepped up to really make this a great success. If you were not able to attend, uh, I didn't attend a lot because my task in this was to babysit <laughs> so that my children could stay down there constantly for two and a half days uh, but it, I was so proud of the effort that they made and it reminded me so much of a lot of my friends when I came back from college and uh, were part of the Palaka JCs and uh, decided we wanted to do something be part of the community and now I'm seeing this with this generation there are many others so I'm not taking away from any that I'm not mentioning but uh, to watch this group uh, come together uh, for a common goal to make our community better uh, so as we as I age and look uh, back to say well who's coming along I'm feeling pretty good about what I see coming on in this community that we're gonna have some great people that uh, love this community love this county want to see it uh, grow 
Uh, and so I wanted to just take this opportunity, Mr. Chairman, to congratulate them and thank them for that hard work that they put in and wish them well for next year's planning. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Smith. And um, I was not able to attend the festival. I did drive up in a boat with uh, my wife and brother and, and sister-in-law and watched some of the skiing, which was, was pretty neat. And uh, but the crowds looked really well. I know, looked really large. I know the commissioners will comment and closing comments, but I, when I pulled up this morning, Laura was pulling up and <laughs> so I watched her get out. I walked over and I said, have you recovered yet? So, and anyway, so it was a long three days, wasn't it? Do you, I don't want to put you on the spot, but do you want to make a comment? Because I know you, were, you and your husband were heavily involved in that, but it seemed like it was a success. Well, I'll speak for David and say um, thank you for your support and having him here. He really appreciated that. And I didn't get to see many people unless you were purchasing beer, because that was my task. But we really appreciated everybody's support, whether it be just promoting us or if you attended. We, we greatly appreciated it. It did turn out more than we anticipated. And you're correct, we started selling out of everything because we just weren't sure how the community would come, but everyone showed up, and we appreciate it. Well, good deal. Thank you for all your efforts. Um, Commissioner, we'll move down to appointments. Are there any appointments? Uh, I'll start with Commissioner Goddard. I have none. Okay, Commissioner Rawls. I have none, but I want to discuss this uh, one for the, um, I guess, it's a, is it the shipboard? Um, it's on the very top of the second page. The affordable housing. Is that ship or the affordable housing? Is it the same as ship? I don't, is it? I don't think so, is it? I think they advise them, don't they, Matt? Anyways, it, it looks like um, there's four positions available. How many serve on that entire? Is that committee able to operate right now? Mr. Chairman, we'll have to get the, uh, the minutes from the meetings and see uh, uh, how often they meet and how many people are showing up and if they're an advisory committee or if they're actually able to hold a meeting. But we'll get that information and bring it back to you. It looks like we need to get to work on that one because they're, they're missing four if, if they're a seven or nine person. Part, part of it is, <clears throat> I think, on this particular committee that there's, it, it's so specific on who is allowed to serve on it in these spots that it's very, very difficult to find somebody that fits it or is willing to serve. So, um, and I, I think, I just think they only meet quarterly. Okay, well, I, I, think, it's, I, don't I think, think it's quarterly. I don't like, think it's a ship program. It could be, but I don't think so. I okay. think there's another committee for ship that, that handles ship, but I could absolutely be incorrect. Well, I just, I, it jumped off the page of me that it has four, it, four people off, the three that have resigned and um, or four that, four that have resigned basically um, but uh, the, the one at the top the at large you're, you're right it's it's very specific they have to be a, a housing contractor or not uh, housing non-profit provider a local planning agency member or employee representative um, but I just think we'd probably get to work on that if we can and make that committee functional functional <clears throat> Commissioner Harvey? I have none. Commissioner Turner? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I want to make a comment. While I'm not prepared today to uh, make any appointments, I would like to make a comment. Um, we have several committees. The affordable housing, the one uh, Commissioner Rawls was just talking about is one of them, but we also have um, Animal Services Advisory Committee and Parks Recreation that has District 3 appointees. Um, I've been working pretty hard trying to find somebody that was interested in doing this so um, and, and have not been successful. Um, I would uh, appreciate the uh, people that are watching it at home to uh, think and consider if they'd like to be on Parks and Recreation or if they'd like to be on Animal Services Advisory Committee or if they fit and would like to sit on the Affordable Housing Committee and reach out to me and we'll talk about it. Um, the, uh, and with that, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Okay. And I have no appointments. So we'll move down to, um, closing comments. Uh, Administrator Suggs. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, just, uh, uh, as a quick recap, uh, that way if there's any questions, we still got everybody here in the room. Uh, Mr. Tompkins and Mr. Reynolds and I, uh, spent a few days on, in our, nation's capital this past week uh, walking the halls of the capital and the Pentagon 
uh, working on projects that are uh, near and dear to Putnam County. Uh, you know, we, we were up there talking about the uh, 2007 water infrastructure uh, project as well as uh, trying to uh, uh, get support for the uh, barge port and the, drain, and the dredging project. Uh, so we met with uh, uh, Congressman Yoho uh, for about an hour. Uh, we met with uh, staff of uh, Senator Rubio for, for quite a while. Uh, we were able to get in and see the Assistant Secretary of the Army, Ryan Fisher, uh, as well as the uh, Deputy Chief of Planning for the Army Corps, Mr. Joseph Redican. And all of those are about those two projects. Uh, there's a lot of support. Uh, we actually found out while we're there that we're actually going to get funding for the study of the dredging project at the Barge Port, uh, which was uh, a great news while we were there to receive that. Uh, we've gotten a tremendous amount of support uh, for the uh, 207 water infrastructure project, which is putting water lines out in East Palanca, uh, removing people off of those wells and, and potential uh, septics within the Federal Point area, as well as uh, 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 the uh, uh, Duns Creek. Uh, so I think those are two very, very worthwhile projects to keep fighting for. Again, uh, everyone at the uh, uh, Army Corps, as well as the uh, uh, the Congressman's office and Senator's office very much in support of those projects, so I think we're doing well there. We met with uh, uh, Gina Owens of the U.S. Forest uh, Division on continuing our efforts to work with our local state officials here on Forest Roads 29 and 62. Uh, we, were, we brought up the fact that we've uh, submitted our second uh, interlocal agreement, easement agreement, and we have not yet heard back. Uh, they actually uh, are going to reach out and see if there's any information they can get for us. Uh, we're fixing to get back in the rainy season. The last one we want is Forest Road 62 and 29 to, to get out of control again. Uh, then we uh, also met with the U.S. Department of Transportation. Uh, Ms. Uh, Vanessa Williams uh, sat down and talked to us. We had submitted a grant uh, that was, um, we heard from our state officials that we didn't qualify. So part of the reason for meeting with those folks was to go through the process. Uh, you know, what do we need to do? How, how do we need to get uh, the where we're actually eligible for these grants. And uh, I'm going to give back Reynolds all the kudos I can here. While we were in the meeting, uh, they were passing out uh, literature on the process and, 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 and how you become eligible. And Matt's reading the application process while we're talking, and he says, well, what about this? And it was uh, the definition for an urban community. We're not considered urban. We were considered rural. Well, according to the information that was uh, passed out, we do qualify. And so uh, the conversation took a different turn at that point. It went from how do we get qualified to can you revisit the one we just submitted? Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're waiting to hear back from that as well. So uh, all in all, I think we had uh, uh, two and a half days up there of, of running and, and, and representing Putnam County well. I think some of these projects, especially the 207 water project, is extremely critical for the East Palanca. Uh, we showed them the article talking about the overflow from St. John's coming out 207 and the work that we've currently done there. Uh, they were very excited about that, and I think we're getting a lot of push. I can tell you that the representation uh, for Putnam County sending folks to D.C. Is, is, is making great headway, and it's something I think you need to consider doing and continue to do in the future. Uh, the more times you can get in front of them, the more times your project gets talked about, and I think we've made great headway this time. And I want to say, again, Press has done a phenomenal job with working with Army Corps on, on both of those projects, and Matt was a great addition. And uh, so we needed to talk uh, finances. We had someone there. And I just think it was a great opportunity for Putnam County, once again, to be recognized in your nation, nation's capital. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Administrator Suggs. And I just want to comment on uh, thank you, Press and, and Matt and uh, Mr. Administrator Suggs for going up there to make those relationships and, uh, and uh, let them know we, you know, we, we have projects that we want to do and why, and we need some funding. So I appreciate y'all's those efforts. Uh, Commissioner Harvey? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Suggs, you know, the 207 water project that we talked about, um, that was kind of discovered by press, if I'm not mistaken, and I want to give kudos to press for discovering that. That was actually sunk into when Congressman Micah mm -hmm. was our congressman, uh, just never got any funding for it. Uh, got approved as a project, but no funding. So um, I just want to say I appreciate, you know, you putting that in front of their front of them all the time as we possibly can. You know, when you have a congressman that wants to move a project up, not only does the project need to be approved, it needs to come with money to, to finish that project. And, um, and I know 
I've walked those halls with you, and you and I have worked in, in the state capitol. We haven't done that much in the national level yet. But um, I, think it, I think any commissioner who avails himself to go up there and bring these projects up, uh, it's, like you said, if you bring that project before them and before them and before them, they start seeing that there's an actual need, and Putnam County does have a need for that. So I want to say thank you for that, and I just wanted to kind of clarify that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right, any other comments? Okay, we'll move to commissioner comments. I'll start with Commissioner Goddard. All right. Hi. Uh, well, I wasn't here. I've been gone. I've been out of town, which is actually pretty nice to leave here because then you can see just what a great county we have here. Um, <laughs> the traffic, the rudeness, uh, it, it's just so sweet to come back to Putnam <laughs> County and, and visit. I want to say, again, the Blue Crab Festival, which uh, Mr. Smith covered, but uh, I saw it on Facebook. Again, I was out of town. I love Facebook for that reason. And it was nothing but thumbs up. Everybody enjoyed it and talked about how great it was, uh, other than it was hot. <laughs> they, uh, they absolutely enjoyed it. And then I want to go on to appreciate our graduating students, our uh, our high school graduation is up, and that's across the board. I mean, it's, it's just a good thing. It's a good thing to see. And these young people, like we saw with the Blue Crab Festival, they, a lot of them are going to be leaving to better their education, but the majority of them do want to come back home. Uh, it's, it's good to hear, uh, and that's all I have. Okay, thank you, Mr. Goddard. Uh, Commissioner Rawls? Fireworks at Blue Crab were very neat. Uh, for those who didn't have a chance to see it, they, uh, I've never seen fireworks shot into the water that actually launched from the water after being put in the water. So that was uh, something was exciting. But um, my family went down there. We actually had some out-of-town guests that came in um, that are actually looking at doing some developing in Putnam County, and they were quite pleased with what they saw. So uh, again, kudos to the, the folks that put that event on. Uh, the Memorial Day Parade, um, several of us got to participate in that yesterday. Um, uh, it, at first, it seemed kind of bleak, and then as we got down closer to the riverfront, the, the crowd started picking up, so um, that was a good time. Um, I did attend the animal control advisory meeting um, last week, and uh, that was kind of interesting. They're, they're a pretty active uh, committee, mm -hmm. um, and they're going to have a, a meeting in June um, and request to be on the, uh, uh, the BOCC's um, workshop sometime in the future uh, to discuss the um, animal control shelter. Um, and then the sandbar in the river. You guys didn't get an opportunity to cool off in the river. <laughs> we, uh, we went down Saturday and just sat in the water, that three feet of water up, up to our necks and stayed cool. So if you do get overheated, remember you got the sandbar down by um, Brown's Landing. Okay. That's it. Thank you, Commissioner Ron. <clears throat> Commissioner Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, got a lot today, so I do want to, first of all, thank Lisa. I see her in the audience. They had animal adoption. Uh, last Saturday, and I went by there and helped kind of set up. I had, sorry I couldn't stay a whole lot longer, but I left for that. But they had uh, 12 dogs y'all were adopting out, and they were the sweetest dogs. At least six of them that I met were just phenomenal. I do want to thank Terry and Matt for coming out. We uh, cooked for the welding class at Interlochen High School. They welded up my grill in exchange for us cooking. And... Uh, <laughs> We fed those young people who were graduating and got their certificates and well, and that's very, very exciting because there was a lot of different types of people there that are going to go on and do something very productive in the county. Last Saturday also was part of the Viking Run. Uh, the, the Viking Run starts at the Bronson Mulholland House and goes across the bridge to Masters Road, and that's my point of giving them refreshments at that point. And, you know, I, I got to thinking while I was standing there waiting for the runners to come, um, you know, I had one of those cleanup grabbers in my truck. I had some garbage bags, and I just started picking up garbage along the route right beside me. And it didn't take long to pick up quite a bit, you know. So I'd encourage you, if you don't have one of those in your truck, get with Chris, and she can hand one to you. Um, I do want to talk about a long-standing resident from Enlarkin who passed away, Mr. John Matthew Sr. Um, he was a very stalwart of a man out in our community, 90-something um, years old, passed away the other day. His funeral will be Thursday morning. 
but I tell you, I look back at when I first went to Interlochen area 36 years ago, there was some real heavy hitters out there, and Mr. Matthew was one of them, and was always a kind, gentle man, but very stern in their beliefs. And uh, but his funeral will be uh, Thursday. I sent you an email yesterday about a little girl named Marley who needs a lung transplant, and um, there's going to be a poker run on Sunday, June 9th. Uh, so that information's on that flyer, and. I'm excited because I've been checking my phone, as you ma might notice. Uh, we're expecting another grandchild any moment. And if it doesn't happen today, it's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, that My daughter, Lindsay, will be induced and we'll have, um, hopefully his name is supposed to be Ma Maverick Law uh, Stein tomorrow morning. So uh, we're going over at 530 to watch the grandchildren while my daughter goes to the hospital and prepares to have a baby and uh, it's so exciting to see that come into the world. So, um, and I'm excited because I love being a papa. So, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> thank you, Commissioner Hargan. Congratulations. How many will this be? Greg? This will be five, number five. Good deal. Uh, Commissioner Turner. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would like to know were them dogs the same after they met you though. They were, they were, they were pretty good, weren't they? They got treats. <laughs> um, up for discussion, I'd like to find out does the board I mean I echo every but what everybody says about the blue crab. I think it was as good as it could be. Um, do we should we do some kind of a resolution or proclamation or something honoring the young professional? I think so. I think that would be very appropriate. I think that needs to take place. So. Absolutely. A spa I think day. that's the littlest we could do. Maybe a spa day? <laughs> <laughs> Pedicure, manicure. <laughs> hey, um, <clears throat> do we know where we are on the lease for the barge port? Is yes. that still in the process or has it been signed? Or? <coughs> no, sir, uh, it has not been signed yet. We were supposed to get a clean copy this past week while I was gone. So as we get that, we'll send it out for both parties to sign. But it is kind of in process. Yes, sir. But yeah, they, they should be moving forward with, with the approval that was given at the workshop. That's fine. Thank you. Um, and um, with everybody having already congratulated the young professionals to the level that they have, um, I just want to make one last comment. Um, not so much on an upbeat level. Um, you know, one of the major calls that I get from more people than, uh, than anything else, whether it be roads, whatever the problems are, it's the biggest problem they have is they don't get their phone calls returned. Now, I've said it two, three times so far. I know that Chairman Pickens brought it up at one of the meetings a while back also. I understand that some of these people that we deal with on a regular basis are not all that pleasant to deal with. I understand it. But we are the government, so we should return the people's phone calls. Uh, even the ones that are disagreeable, we should return their phone calls. Just because we don't have to doesn't mean we shouldn't do it. It's the right thing to do. A lot of times when people call up here or contact me, or I'm sure the other commissioners too, um, it may not be a real big deal to any of us, but it's a big deal to them, a big deal to them, because it's, it's impacting their lives. And so some of the things that they have to go and work on <clears throat> and ask to be worked on are keeping them up at night. They're not sleeping, and we can't even call them back. I'm asking the department heads to please talk to their people again and see if we can figure out a policy, a way, somehow, that somebody can call people back. Call them back and just say, I'm sorry I can't do it. I'm sorry you can't do it. I'm sorry whatever, but call them back. Because then they're not, they're mad because they couldn't do it, but they're not sitting there impacting their lives and can't even get an answer about it. Please call the people back. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I'm done. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Turner. 
And I'll, I'll add to that also, I ran into a couple of citizens last week about issues, and that was probably their biggest complaint was getting a call back. And they just, they want to answer yes or no, or this is how you have to do it. So I, I know it takes time, but even if the department heads can't call, get one of your staff members to call back. Um, I want to commend Lisa Suarez uh, for the adoption. Um, Lisa, and also thank you for catching the stray dog. Was it out in Interlochen? Hawthorne, yeah, it was hanging around uh, a convenience store. So you caught that dog. Were you able to get it adopted, or do you have it in at the animal shelter? Okay, well, good deal. Well, thank you. Um, like I said, I was not able to attend the the uh, blue crab, but it sounds like it was uh, a really good event. I did, like I say, went to the ski show, uh, but I was able to come up to um, to ride in the parade, um, the Memorial Day parade. And uh, with Commissioner Turner, his lovely wife, Laura, his grandson, Tyler, um, Commissioner Rawls and Liam were in a golf cart behind us. And uh, Stacy Papel was with, is it the Daughters of the American Revolution? Mm -hmm. sure. And they walked the whole route. So I know it was really hard. And uh, Administrator <laughs> Suggs was also with us. Um, and it was just, um, it was really special to be able to go down to the riverfront afterwards and, 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 uh, and participate, not participate, but to listen to the memorial service. There were actually two or three World War II veterans there. And as you can see in the front of the plaque of newspaper, one, uh, the World War II veterans led the parade. Mm -hmm. um, but it just was um, really is, is uh, if you think and take a moment that uh, the reason we have our freedoms and our liberties are for people uh, and they said this in the song, that all gave some, but some gave all, but to honor the men and women who lost their lives, you know, service in this country. Uh, so anyway, uh, we have a 2 o'clock transportation meeting, um, and I did skip over uh, legal counsel. Mr. Cassiberry, do you have any comments? No, sir. Thank you. Okay. There's no further business. We stand adjourned.